Hey everybody, how are you? I hope you are doing well. Welcome to this Quilt Nerd Shorty. Um, so my, uh, the office, you know, uh, wait, let me make sure everybody can hear me. Uh, Invisible Mary, yeah, okay, good, but you can hear me. Yeah, I'm invisible today because the, you've, if some of you have been on, I've seen the streams that happen during the daytime, when the sun is out, it comes through the blinds, <laughs> like right where I'm sitting. And I just, I just can't do it. I just cannot be like pierced with the sun. I can't do it. So, so I'm just going to, you know, podcast uh, style this live stream. Um, and so, and so thank you for coming. I'm trying this different formats, you know, trying like to do things quickly. I don't know, trying to make like a condensed episode of Quilt Nerd just to see if this can lead into making YouTube videos a little bit easier, a little bit more efficient. Um, the last time we did this last week, I, uh, I went for an hour. So my goal today, I promise Susanna, not that she doesn't like the content, but you know, just trying to, uh, uh, you know, we, I want to move forward, right? Be efficient. So she, she said, you know, I challenge you, essentially, I challenge you to, uh, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes. So I'm going to try my best, right? Mm. So, hey, everybody, Coco Tan. Hi. It's interesting. I've signed into YouTube as my primary, uh, primary stream tool today because I did the private stream for the tier two and tier three subscribers yesterday, which happens on YouTube. Um, and I didn't switch back. So it's interesting. Um, I've got the YouTube people in my main feed and I want to say hi to Kim and Coco. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody in Twitch, of course. Um, yeah, Joyous Fivers and Marsha and everybody. All right. So today I thought we would take a look at pictorial quilts. Pictorial. How did we say it? How did we, what did we decide? Pictorial? I think it's just pictorial. Hey, Eric. Eric, how do you, how do you say this word? How do you say this word? Which? Pictorial? Pictorial. Okay. So Eric, who's here in the office, he says pictorial. What about you? I guess that's one thing to find out, right, before I make a YouTube video, where comment sections are just, you know, cesspools. Um, so uh, let's, you know, I could do a poll, but I won't do that right now. Just tell me what you think. Um, everybody says hi, Eric. Okay. Um, so so I, what I want to do is um, I've got a bunch of books, a bunch of resources. Um, Susanna, thank you. Yay. Thanks, Susanna. I'm glad you're here. Um, I've got a bunch of resources that I will share with you. I'm using a ton of books today. Um, let me just welcome Susanna to the stream. Um, and, and what I want to look at is pictorial, pictorial quilts um, of different kinds, okay? Because I'm kind of trying to figure some stuff out, actually, about pictorial quilts. Um, and just kind of what they are are and what they aren't. Um, hey, Kenny. So Mr. Googly says, Marsha um, says pic pictorial with, with the E, pictorial, no, pictorial, pictorial, pictorial. Okay, pictorial. Yeah, okay, good. I think that's what I, what I uh, usually do. Okay, so pictorial quilts. I think the first thing to establish is what they're not, right? Um, quilts can be um, representational, the, the patterns often, I mean, if you think about, you know, quilt pattern names, like most of them, I would say, just a lot of them um, have nouns in them, like, you know, bear's paw, you know, these are like things that you could depict uh, in a picture, right, in a, in a uh, illustrative way. In fact, I, I meant to say that the definition of pictorial um, is of or expressed in pictures illustrated. So expressed in pictures, uh, illustrated. And it's from the late Latin, pictorious. Reminds me of that song, Notorious. Anyway, um, uh, pictorious, which is from the verb pingere. And I bet Sherlock knows that root, uh, to paint, pingere. Pintar, I think, is the Spanish infinitive for painting, I think. Um, all right. Anyway, so so hey, quilted. So expressed in pictures or illustrated. So so that's that helps us because you know this is a delectable mountain uh, quilt. That's the name of the pattern. Um, eighty by eighty, made between eighteen seventy and uh, eighteen ninety. It's fabulous. And so you know this uh, quilt pattern happen, happens to reference um, 
Pilgrim's Progress, uh, and uh, it's a classic traditional um, uh, American quilt pattern, right? On um, the Delectable Mountain, and there are many variations on it. So it might call to mind a mountaintop, uh, maybe a bird's eye view of a mountaintop. And actually, come to think of it, looking at this kind of reminds me of that other quilt pattern, uh, housetop. Lots of housetop quilts, especially down south. Um, lots of quilts uh, called housetop, and that's a particular pattern. Here's another traditional quilt, okay? Very traditional. Um, this is called Love's Quilt. Very sweet, and we know who made it. Mary Love Baker Campbell in 1925. And this is um, a traditional quilt that is not at all pictorial, right? It's a strip quilt. Oh, sorry. I had really salty pasta for lunch, early lunch. It was great. Anyway, um, this is a, a bar, bar quilt, strip quilt. Um, it's, uh, you know, there, there's just nothing pictorial about it. You would have to really read into things to say that this was uh, expressing something in pictures. It's abstract. It's, it's patchwork. It's great. Hey, Lady Kay. Um, and then this one, too. You know, it's a pretty, pretty standard log cabin. Uh, this is a, a crib quilt we actually looked at last week um, on that other shorty I did. Um, and so, you know, log cabin is, it references a thing, right? And it, 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 there are logs we call, you know, making our log cabin blocks. We make the logs and then we put them together and we have the, the center of the log cabin. And so you have cabin and logs and things, but, but it's not pictorial. It, it, and, and actually, you know, part of what I'm trying to figure out is why it isn't. <laughs> I mean, when you really start thinking hard about some of these things, you kind of like start folding in on yourself about, you know, why things are the way they are. I love this one too. Um, but this, but this, it's at, and it's an abstraction. Uh, I, I guess that's the easiest way to say it. It's abstractly referencing um, log cabins. Okay. All right. So I love pictorial quilts. They're some of my favorite quilts of all time. Okay. The most famous quilt. Um, probably in the in the country one of the most famous quilts in the world uh published widely loved beloved by many um harriet powers bible quilt and this is without a doubt a pictorial quilt it is expressed in pictures these are scenes from the bible expressed in pictures um and uh you know it, it's easy to see like the different scenes that she's uh that she's depicting jonah and the whale jonah jonas no jonah um, the Jonas Brothers and the Whale. Um, she's got, you know, the Garden of Eden here someplace. She's got um, the serpent, you know, yeah, there in the garden. So, so all of those scenes, each block portrays a different scene in the Bible. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's evocative and it's fabulous. And you can tell there are animals and there are birds. It's an illustration. It's kind of a, yeah, it's, a, it's an illustration of stories. And one of the things I've been thinking about too and kind of trying to get my head around is, you know, are pictorial quilts, are all, are all pictorial quilts story quilts? I don't think so, but I think all story quilts are pictorial quilts. Okay, and we'll talk a little bit more about story quilts here in a second. Um, Bible quilts in general, uh, there's there are, there's a whole genre. In fact, I want to do a shorty um, at some point on Bible quilts because I have so many of them. There's so many Bible quilts um, of different kinds, and 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 because they're, you know, trying to in some cases trying to teach the Bible. I suspect um, they they are pictorial because they're showing scenes from the Bible. You know, uh, depicting, painting, illustrating scenes from the Bible. Um, Sherlock had a question. Uh, what's the difference between pictorial and representational? Well, the thing is, Sherlock, is I think, I mean, pictorial figures, you know, represent their signs or symbols for things like people, you know, in this case here. But, but representational, I mean, I, my mom has used that word when referring to like a basket block or a bear's paw or flying geese. I mean, flying geese is really abstract, but you know, like a basket block is sort of representational of a basket, but, but I wouldn't call a basket block pictorial, you know? But, but as I was putting this together, I was like, yeah, but like, ugh. are they in some way pictorial? Hey, I'm Sue John the Flinster, Prairie Susie. I'm so happy. Oh, I'm glad. <laughs> I know Prairie, Prairie Susie wouldn't mind if the, if the stream uh, was long, and I actually wouldn't mind either, but I gotta try, I gotta try. 
Um, layers of abstraction. The thing is, Sherlock, and Caitlin's interested in that too, I, that's what I'm trying to figure out. And I guess, to be, to be honest with you, if you want to get really nerdy, I mean. That's what I do. I invented post-its. If we want to get really nerdy and talk about, you know, technical terms, I mean, you can talk about like, not symbiotics, what, uh, semiotics, <laughs> semiotics, you know, which is like studying signs and symbols and what they mean um, to people and how we do represent, I mean, words like representational, pictorial, symbolic, uh, abs um, yeah, these are, these words have different meanings and, you know, maybe there's a research project in here for somebody to talk about, about the difference. So this is an amazing Bible quilt. Um, made in 1880. Uh, I do not believe we have the name. I would have put it there. Um, Bible quilt 73 by 76. Let me zoom out so you can see just what we're looking at here. Uh, incredible. So obviously we have the ark there, the animals uh, two by two going to the ark. And I'm going to give you the resources, uh, all of the books that I use today um, to get these, these pictures. There's a lot of them. In fact, why don't I do this now? Um, let's see. While you're looking at that, um, I have to put it in the YouTube chat, which is a little wild, but um, that's the my primary stream source right now. It's not interesting and it's annoying, but but there it is. It's it's quiltnerd.link slash Clark Story Quilts because the woman who wrote this book. Her last name is Clark. Many of you have this book because we actually have used it several times on the show and it's marvelous. It's story quilts and how to make them, I think. It's really, really great. Um, yeah, I mean, look at this. Incredible. I don't know my Bible as well as other people uh, certainly do, but, but I mean, wow. Look, I mean, look at these figures down here. And by the way, I am still learning this new program to show you images on the show. And it was a little tough yesterday, or on Saturday night maybe, but I'm getting the hang of it. And this is great, because we can zoom in really tight on corners, and I don't, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't snap back. Anyway, uh, so pretty, pretty cool. Um, so Bible quilts are one kind of pictorial quilt. That's kind of a, a subgenre, I would say. Um, but then, you know, again, with this like um, representational or you know, the difference between a representational quilt block and a pictorial quilt block. I mean, just think about how we have Jacob's Ladder. You know, we have, we have Jacob's Ladder. That's a kind of quilt pattern, but there's no Jacob depicted and there's no ladder exactly depicted like there was in that Bible quilt we just looked at. Um, anytime I can get uh, Grandma Carpenter quilts into the show, you know, I'm pretty much gonna do it. So uh, this is a Grandma Carpenter uh, quilt that we know and love, um, Comet, the Comet quilt. And this to me is, you know, it's just classic pictorial. When I think about pictorial quilts, um, I think about, I guess I think about like sort of whimsical shapes, which, which, and that's why looking at these more deeply has really been interesting for me because, you know, that's not really the case. I mean, just because I like the pictorial quilts with like the funny little animals on them, I always say, you know, if it's my favorite kinds of quilts or any quilt with, you know, applique animals on them and you can't really tell if the animal is like a moose or a dog or a hippo, you just don't know. And those are my favorite kinds of quilts and they are definitely pictorial. But, and so I love this moon, you know, in this uh, Grandma Carpenter, Harriet Carpenter quilt. I love the comet. Um, I love the stars and this and the star shower. You see that, don't you? This star shower coming across the screen. It's, it's just absolutely sublime. And, and it is pictorial. It was made for uh, her grandson, I believe, in 1892. Her husband, by the way, Uriah, uh, either helped quilt it or helped design it. I don't remember. Anyway, classic, right? Classic pictorial quilt. This one is also, to me, a classic pictorial quilt. Um, it's less... Like the, the, the animals are a little, I don't know, a little bit more rough hewn, if you will. Um, they, they are, but, and they even get kind of abstract. It's called the possum quilt. Uh, it's so amazing. Uh, Mary Elizabeth Moore Sorrels uh, in Georgia made this quilt uh, in 1885, but there are patches on it 
from the 1970s, which is really interesting. And this wonderful book comes from um, over here, dun, 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 um, the phenomenal Georgia uh, quilt documentation book, which I believe, hang on one second. Yeah, yeah, quiltnerd.link slash Georgia is our affiliate link. And it's great if you want any of these used books, they're all used. They're all available pretty cheaply. Um, if you uh, want to get these books, I would love it if you go through our affiliate link because it, um, it tosses a few uh, ducats our way. So uh, this book, and I'll zoom out just one second, quiltnerd.link slash Georgia. You click on that, you can go, go get that. Um, it's, it's amazing, the Georgia book. So yeah, so <laughs> yeah, Kim says they look more like skins of animals. Yeah, it's true. They kind of look. They look like flattened possums. These uh, look. This one is so great with the the denim denim jean patches, right? Um, they do look kind of squashed, and I love that. <laughs> and if you, you know, you could argue that they're kind of abstract too, but these to me, whoops, sorry, these uh, th this quilt to me. Um, is a pictorial quilt because you have those kind of foxes here in the, in the center, but the shapes are depicting something. It's depicting something literal. It's not like a checkerboard, you know, patchwork block that's called possum block. This is somebody picked out fabric. There's like legs and ears, you know, so. But, but by the way, you know, the, the Quilt Nerd Show always has been, always will be, an exploration with you. It's not a presentation. It's a place where ideas come out and people share thoughts and, and it's just the, the most fun because, you know, I don't know everything, my God. So I get to learn along with you. Um, another classic pictorial quilt, Grape Arbor, 1880, <laughs> probably made by Mariana Bordiker Hofmeister. It's 83 by 69. And let's take a look more closely in here. I mean, you know, if a pictorial quilt, you know, looks like a painting. Oh, here's my chat. Okay, sorry. Um, if a pictorial quilt uh, is supposed, you know, is supposed to look like a painting, or you know, by the definition of pictorial, is painterly, uh, this one for sure counts. You know, as one of those. Let me uh, let me grab my book here. One second. Um, this book, this is the uh, stories and um, uh, burp, 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 story quilts and how to make them. Uh, that first link I gave you, the Clark, Clark book. Um, yeah, Grape Arbor. Hang on. Is that here? No. Here we go. Uh, the Grape Arbor quilt is an unusual quilt. So this is uh, Mary Clark speaking. I'll just read you a little bit about this quilt because I mean it's just so amazing and we know some something about it. Uh, let me zoom out so you can kind of see the full thing. I'll scroll down and then I'll come back in for some details. Uh, Clark writes, the Grape Arbor quilt is an unusual quilt full of tantalizing details. It is thought to have been made by Mariana Bordiker Hofmeister, who came to America from Westfalen, Ger uh, Germany in the early 19th century. Um, da -da 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 -da. Mm -hmm. The fabrics used to make this quilt are those that were used for clothing and household items in the late 19th century, chambray, dark percals, and plain white sheeting. The quilt picture has been hand appliqued uh, and hand quilted, and the irregularity of the shapes suggests they were most probably cut freehand. Only the neatly planned and executed lilies on the border have the appearance of having been cut using a pattern. Uh, the border has been machine quilted. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, look at that. The border has been machine quilted. This was in 1885. Sorry, 1880. Oh, in Iowa. She was maybe in Iowa. Um, the lilies have been sewn over the quilted fabric. Wow, interesting. <laughs> um, yeah, Marcia, it is a great book. Um, yeah, stylistically, da, 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 da. Oh yeah, she says stylistically, the border and central picture are quite different. Let's get the full thing. And uh, she says this leads some to believe uh, the border was added at a different time. Very cool. So yeah, pictorial for sure. Um, this one, this one is great. And this brings up a question too, um, or just more like granular, like looking at <laughs> pictorial quilts and like the differences and, 
and all of the complexities when you really nerd out on them. This is uh, a pictorial quilt from the late 19th century, um, and this is at the, in the collection of the Shelburne Museum in Vermont, a fabulous museum. They have wonderful quilts. Um, this, this quilt is what I would consider a cross-stitch style quilt. We've been talking about those on the, on the show. Um, you know, from time to time, we, there was a, a point of time where I just kept finding cross-stitch style quilts every time I was preparing for the show. So, um, you know, cross-stitch being kind of like, you know, people today might call it sort of pixelated, this uh, creating pictures and shapes uh, using very small squares of fabric, like postage stamps size in some cases, but really um, using squares to, yeah, look like a, to make a to make a picture right um and so yeah this quilt is marvelous and i think cross stitch quilts there are so many we have i'll do i'll do a segment on those too right like a, a youtube video i have so much content to make youtube videos and it's like ah uh, it just takes so long um and the cross stitch quilts that we've looked at i mean i'd say they're all pictorial but of course not all pictorial quilts could be considered cross stitch quilts really interesting anyway this i mean wow we don't know the person who made this um but it is it is just incredible wow 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 okay um <clears throat> pardon me this is a very famous quilt um called american life or at least that's what we know it as hang on i gotta figure out my shortcut keys to get the quilt full size in the in the view um this quilt um god where's my my thing on this one. Uh, this was featured in as one of the 100 best quilts of the 20th century. Um, let me grab that. And it's and it's in you know, <laughs> it's in a lot of different quilt texts. It's uh, you know Bob Shaw has written about this quilt. Uh, Jonathan Holstein and Shelley Ziegard have written written about this quilt. The Quilt Museum. Um, and here's what uh, what they say in the 20th centuries. Uh, best quilts, um, you know, the big thing they did to pick the 100 best quilts of the 20th century, and this was published in 1999. Uh, it was made by Mrs. Cecil White in 1930. Um, yeah, and it is called American Life. And they write, while little is known about the quilt maker and how she came to make this quilt, it can be enjoyed by anyone who studies the vignettes of American life she depicts. Mrs. White was a keen observer of human activity and perhaps an avid reader of comics, for the portrayals seem to reflect a style similar to cartoon art. Innocent of political correctness, oh boy, yeah, I haven't looked that closely, I hope it's not too horrifying, she depicts 1930s stereotypes of ethnic groups engaged in exaggerated moments of activity. Illustrations include rural scenes, sports, dancing, a shoeshine parlor, a police chase, a wedding, an elopement, a portrait painting, and a trolley ride. Yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Mrs. White's choice of a variety of background fabrics for the blocks increases the depth perception so that the eye seems to move in and out of the frames. Uh, I th I'm bothered by the, the, how she used the term political correctness, like innocent of political correctness. Eh, you know, I'm going to have to give it. I'm going to have to give it one of those. Um, the narrow black sashing dotted with red circular shapes. Um, <laughs> Uh, the inter intersection sets the scenes apart in a witty manner. The black border is appliqued with late models of automobiles, trucks. Now I'm paranoid of what's on your screen. Trucks and trains to set the final note of modernity. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Yeah, the border is really great. And I think it's the, it's the addition of those red circles in the middle of the, like the cornerstones or these red circles. That really gives it that cartoon quality too. Interesting. I would say... There's another research project about that quilt. Okay, okay, so there we go. So now, just got a couple other things to show you. Um, the Century of Progress exhibit um, and contest in, the 19, in 1933 and 34 for the Chicago World's Fair. I mean, some of the most, the coolest uh, um, pictorial quilts ever, ever, ever seem to come out of that, um, that that period of time, you know, when, when this was all going on, right? Um, the early 1930s, the, the Century of Progress exhibit and well, the Century of Progress contest was put on by Sears 
Sears and Roebuck here in Chicago. The uh, the World's Fair was to happen in 1933, and Sears uh, Company wanted to sell sewing machines, of course, <laughs> and uh, and so they sponsored um, a quilt contest. And if you uh, if you won, there was you know something like seventeen hundred dollars or something could be yours. And this was in the, just the the nadir uh, of the Great Depression, right? A terrible time for, for most Americans. And so 25,000 quilts were submitted to this Century of Progress um, quilt contest. And there, there's a wonderful book by Barbara Brackman and Mary Kay Waldvogel, um, I believe. Mm -hmm. Here's the link for that. Oops. That's right. Um, Robin, if you're watching, even Cake, if you're watching, I don't know if you are, could you check that link? Is that true? Did I give the right one for this entry of progress? But it might be Patchwork Souvenirs. Anyway, um, it's a great book, and uh, most of you probably will have that book already because it's a, a classic. Um, but the pictorial quilts that came uh, out of that contest are so wonderful because you got extra um, consideration, or there was, an e there was extra prize money if you incorporated the theme of the Chicago World's Fair into your quilt. And the theme was the century of progress. So, you know, this is, uh, you know, the, the tower, the, um, what was it, like the main building uh, for the fair that she's depicting here in this kind of art deco way. Uh, the block she's using is called World Without End. So it's this pictorial center with a very traditional um, quilt block around around her, by the or around the, the center um, point of focus. And by the way, I mean, did you, I gotta zoom in closer on these. Do you see this applique? Like it is just wild. It's so good. It's so delicate. Hey, Bisbee. Hi, hi, hi. It's so good to see you. Central Pavilion. Thank you, Sherlock. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, it's really fun. Look, the blimp, you know, the blimp. Patrick Seymour. Great, Robin. Thank you so much. Okay, so that link was right. Here's one more, Emma Andres. And I put this one in there because, again, cross-stitch quilt, lady with the spinning wheel. And I'd say it's pictorial. I guess all cross-stitch quilts are pictorial and not all pictorial quilts are cross-stitch quilts. You know? Very interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, there's one more. There. The, uh, the Sears Pavilion, 1933. Laura McKinley Montgomery. Isn't that great? Let me zoom in on the quilting because it's just so good. Wow. And, you know, writing about these quilts. Oh, look, the Sears building. Nice, nice. Way to get in good, you know? Way to get in good. Um, the There's wonderful content in that book, Patchwork Souvenirs, um, by Wal Vogel and Brackman. And they write, you know, they write detailed information, right, about a lot of these quilts. And there's just so many wonderful ones. I have a dream that Quilt Folk would publish the second edition of that book because it's so, so extraordinary. Maybe, maybe we could. So, okay, so that's the Century of Progress. Now, a couple more things. Here are a few quilts that I, I don't know. Like, is this quilt pictorial? Like, I'm j and, 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 you know, there's not like a right answer and I'm not trying to like, you know, crack a case or, or, or find somebody who, you know, made an error in a book, in my opinion. Like, that's not what it's about. What I'm trying to figure out is what are the qualities of a pictorial quilt? What makes that? Because defining something, you know, it's a good thing, right? Now, definitions can change. Uh, they can be flexible. They can be, you know, poor. But, like, to kind of understand, you know, it's like getting a diagnosis. You know, it's like, oh, okay. That, that makes sense, you know. So, so this quilt has certainly the arc in the middle is a pictorial element. But my question is, you know, are these birds, doves, I guess, you know, they're, they repeat their, their blocks. I mean, I think, right? They serve as, as blocks. So is that, oh, okay, Robin, thank you. Okay, hey, babe, yay, Susan, hi. Um, so, space quilts are pictorials. Space quilts, I'm not thinking what you mean. Space quilts, I like, I like, I like it. Um, 
Oh, Marsha, I just saw your comment about your research. Yes, please do it, do it. And listen, Marsha, I'll give you all of these images in a, in a folder so you can go through them and look and study them. I mean, I would be so happy to do that. And, um, you know, I can, I can point you in the direction of more stuff to look at. I mean, my goodness, please just email me about it and, and, and I'll get that going for you. Uh, I'd love, I'd love that. Um, so Angelina, hey girl, it's, uh, is repetition a disqualifier then? Hmm. Yeah, I know. Like that doesn't seem right. You know, that it should be a disqualifier. So I, I don't know, but you see what I'm saying? Here's here. This is great. So this is a, um, a quilt by a uh, Japanese quilt maker, Ritsuko Machida. Um, it's called House, and it was made in the 1980s. I don't have the actual, oh no. <laughs> I don't know. It's between 18, 1980 and 1995, let's call it. Um, it was in a show at the New England Quilt Museum, and it is one of my favorite quilts of all time. <laughs> really, really, I say that a lot, but like, are you kidding me? This thing is so cool. It is so amazing. It's so amazing. And it's called House. And this is for sure representational. These houses are abstract, though. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't, there's not a right answer. But, but I'm trying to figure it out. And then I think, I think the people watching, you know, you can, you can understand, like, you know, why it's, I don't know, it's just fun to think about it, frankly. Um, they depict houses. It, does it depict houses? Yes. You know, are they applique little houses? No. But why should a pictorial quilt only be applique, right? That doesn't make any sense. So, yeah, like little salt boxes. I love that. Yeah. I mean, the piecing on this quilt is just to die for, right? really really great let's see make sure yeah yeah um so yeah so then there's that one so you know this is the the brief section Susanna I'm like totally bringing it home soon <laughs> I swear um yeah we're doing pretty good oh no I'm not it's been 38 minutes okay so um so I was wondering about flag quilts are flag quilts pictorial um would they be grouped in the pictorial uh category right yeah, hey, Little Bird Stitch. Um, the, uh, the story quilt and the pictorial quilt are kind of, they're slightly different, just that a pictorial quilt doesn't really have to tell a story. You know, it could be fruits and vegetables or something, you know, being depicted on, uh, on a quilt. Story quilts have a narrative. They, they do, the, the maker intended for there to be a narrative to the quilt that you may know or that you may not know. Um, and I'm gonna wrap it up with some of those story quilts. Um, this is at the Shelburne Museum, uh, Carrie M. Carpenter, sunflower quilt. So cool, so beautiful. Um, I love, I love this quilt. <clears throat> Look how, you know, we have where the bed posts or the posters of the bed come through the lower part of the quilt here. I mean, the, the quilt is shaped to accommodate the posters of the bed, so it's shaped like that. <coughs> Excuse me. And I love the way the vines grow from grow from that. Isn't that wonderful? So this is, you know, this is depicting sunflowers. Is it pictorial? I don't know. Marsha, I really hope, I mean, I really hope you look at this. Seriously. It would be so terrific. This is a Bertha Mextroth's uh, star quilt. Um, Stars are showering over the, the quilt top, uh, applique on after the quilting. Um, and it, I don't know. Would you consider it pictorial? I don't know, I don't know. The sunflowers are great, right? Symbolic, yeah, symbolic. Mm -hmm. And you know, Marsha, I mean, if you look, I mean, like you might even start getting into r r Roland Barthes. <laughs> Roland Barthes, you know, that French philosopher who did, talked about semiotics and he talked about signs and, and how people, you know, read signs and what signs mean. I mean, I really think semiotics could be, I think it might be involved in what you want to look at. See, you see how I'm pushing you to do this? 
You, it, you could do it. You could do it. Not pictorial to Susan, the uh, sunflowers. Little Bird loves the sunflowers as well. And, and Little Bird says, it seems to me that pictorial and representational are the same as in recognizable images. That's interesting. OK, that's interesting. Mm hmm. This uh, many of you will recognize as a Fonte Asafo flag. Um, this is, you know, classic Fonte Asafo flag with, uh, you know, a big animal eating the enemy, right? The uh, warring militia group. Uh, so, and, and these I would say are clearly pictorial. They are depicting a scene, appliqued, um, sort of telling a story, but at least depicting um, how tough the people waving the flag really are because they're going to like, you know, they're tigers and they're going to eat the other guy, right? So, um, another YouTube video about Fonte Asafo flags would be great. Um, my last section here is just to show you a few contemporary uh, story quilts, uh, pictorial quilts. This was the intro quilt uh, some months ago. This is by Peggy L. Hartwell. It's called The China Berry Tree. It was made in 1994. Uh, it's in the wonderful book uh, Spirits of the Cloth by um, Spirits of the Cloth Contemporary African American Quilts by Carolyn Maslumi. Um, and this one is, oh, it's just so lovely. And it tells the story of, you know, the children hiding in the China Berry Tree and you know, as they were kids. And, and, and The Spirits of the Cloth book is a really, really great book, and I encourage you to get it. I've got the, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, here's the link. Put it in the chat. Quiltner.link slash Maslumi Spirits. So clearly a, st a story quilt uh, telling, telling a narrative, you know, a, a picture, right? It's a picture, like a painting. Um, this one... Yeah, um, this is actually Paula Nadelstern, 1985. Um, very different from other things that we know of her. I mean, is that right? Can that be right? I have to double check. Hold, hold on. Um, where is that? Where is that? Where is that? Right, it's in the it's in the Mosey Pictorial Guide to Pictorial Quilts. Hmm. Well, it's it says Nadelstern, but it's just so very different from normal Paula Nadelstern quilts. I'm I'm almost too. I'm, I'm, it's sus to me. It's very sus. Um, Robin, thank you so much. Yeah, pictorial, um, representational. There's no applique here just like the house uh, quilt by um, our friend in Japan, you know, there's, there's a, um, yeah, there's a representational quality to this. It's not painterly. Maybe you could, maybe that's another word to add into your really exciting research project, Marcia. <laughs> um, painterly, right? Um, Michael Cummings, uh, who we met at the Birmingham Quilt Festival this summer uh, and talked to for a little while. He makes uh, story quilts incredible. Um, he's a genius, I think. This quilt is called Red Admiral. Admiral, like the Red Admiral butterfly. 72 by 72 is made in 2001. And this wonderful image uh, I found through the Sakwa website, Studio Art Quilt Association. Uh, they're fabulous, and uh, they are friends uh, to many art quilters. Um, and so, yeah, so this is definitely pictorial, I would say. I would say. It's painterly. Uh, the definition of pictorial, as we looked at, was you know, of or expressed in pictures, illustrated. So this seems very il illust illustratorial to me. <laughs> I made that up. Yeah, I love this quilt. I know. It, he's, he's the best. Um, Chris Wolf Edmonds. We still haven't done an, a segment on Chris Wolf Edmonds. We will. Uh, maybe this is the, the, the push I need to do it. Uh, this is called Cherokee Trail of Tears. It was made in 1979. One thing about Chris Wolf Edmonds that I really am fascinated by is her range. I mean, she really, from what I've seen of her quilts, she has made so many different kinds, many different styles of quilts uh, over her time. Uh, I believe she's still making quilts. I'll, I'll check. But um, Cherokee Trail of Tears, it's 56 by 80, and it's um, clearly depicting... Um, you know, symbolically, <laughs> um, a spirit, a, um, uh, you know, sort of 
I mean, it's not it's not a scene so much as an interpretation of um, a period of history and uh, uh, an event in American history, right? A tragic event. Yeah, illustrative, right? Yeah. Um, let's see. These are uh, this is from the Haiti Peace Quilt Project. Um, there's no Abe links uh, Abe link for the Haiti Peace Quilt um, book because it's not available on on Abe Books, but I do have a link for you. It's a really good one. Um, it is here. It's called uh, Patience to Raise the Sun. And some of the um, the quilts in, in this book are just just terrific and, and extremely pictorial. You know what? This quilt could go into my Bible quilt uh, video, right? Um, it's called, yeah, Large de No, the, the Noah's Ark by Denise Estava in 2008, 39 by 47. I don't know. It's like, I'm not a, I don't know my Bible and I don't, I don't, I don't read the Bible. I don't know it very well, but it's like, I don't know. Like, I think I, you know, making a Bible quilt, like, I, I don't know. It just seems like the stories are so, well, they're just stories, right? I just, the ark and the little animals, I really, it looks really fun, right? To make, to make a boat like this and, I really like how she's got Noah here, you know, and all the animals going two by two. It just seems, I don't know, it seems like a good subject matter. All these animals fleeing to go on a big boat ride, right? Okay, and then, whoops, the last one, let me show you. Oh yeah, there's, there's a couple. I'm not doing very well with uh, making this short. But see, the thing is, if I, if I didn't talk to you all, at all, if I didn't talk to you at all, Things would go more quickly, but here's the thing about that. Uh, this is called, by the way, um, D.D. Tolber. Oh, so sorry. Yeah, D.D. Tolber, Carolyn Meslumi, 1999. If I didn't talk to you at all, I think it would be unfortunate because the gift of the live stream format is the chat. I mean, it's many things. For Quilt Nerd, I'm so grateful for the live stream format because quilts are visual and we can look at them when we are on this kind of platform. Uh, we can look at them close up. A podcast is great, but you can't actually see the things you're talking about uh, live like this. So I really love live streaming. Um, I love doing it on Twitch, which is a great platform. So um, one of the things that makes it great too is being able to talk to you. So I really like that. Um, to not do it seems to be a waste of the format. Um, but Susanna, I told you like the first time I tried to do a short episode, I learned things and now I'm learning things. And maybe next time I won't talk to anybody and I'll just go through it. I don't know. I don't know if I can do it. Look at those. Are those violets? Nasturtiums? I don't know my flowers very well. Pansies. Oh, pansies. Babe says pansies. Yeah. Yeah. Pansies. Okay. Great. Great. They really do look real. This is a wonderful, wonderful quilt. Um, Ruth McDowell. Here's one for you, Marsha. <laughs> you know, clearly representing rocking chairs. I love Ruth McDowell. I love her so much. She's so great. Um, and these are, you know, abstractions, but, you know, is this a pictorial quilt? So, so anyway, so, you know, this is what I'm thinking about, and that's what I wanted to share. Hey, Donna. Um, hey, Jay Kazan. Um, oh, good, Ivy. That's great. Hey, Dee Marie. Hey, all right. That's good. <laughs> hey, Jay. Good to see you. Um, yeah, so I like to think about this stuff. I like to think about it with you all. Um, I like to look at quilts. I like to look at art. Um, I really like what I do because I just like, I like looking at this stuff. I like to see beautiful things that people make with their hands. And, you know, I'm looking at art that's, you know, a z bazillion dollars, right? You know, an art that costs nothing. And it's just such a wide range of things to look at and to think about when you think about quilts. So thank you for joining me for this Quilt Nerd Shorty. Um, yeah, 50 minutes, not bad. I'd say I'm onto something. I hope everybody has a great day and I hope you all um, take care and uh, you're, you're careful out there, uh, especially with all the snow and California, I know is still dealing with stuff. So uh, be well, I care about you and I appreciate your support. If you like this content, I hope you'll consider becoming a subscriber. And if you click the follow button, you'll get notified when I go live and we have a really good time here and uh, I hope you come back sometime. Okay, take care, bye.